Are you getting ready to take the Praxis Mathematics exam? That's test code 5165, which covers several secondary math topics, including geometry. Hi, my name is Morgan, and I'm a Praxis coach with Study.com, and I've also been teaching math for over eight years. Today, I'm here to help you with some geometry examples similar to what you'll be seeing on the test. I want to point out that you have access to an on-screen graphing calculator, which I recommend taking full advantage of, even if only to check your mental math. Let's get you feeling confident for test day. You ready? All right, so this first question asks, what is the measurement of angle CBF? So if I look at CBF, that is referring to this angle right here, represented by 4x plus 8. So I know that the equation that I want to set up needs to include the variable x so that I can know what x is to plug in and find out the angle measure CBF. So the measure here, CBF, is a vertical angle pair with angle ABH because um, they're kind of like mirrored images of each other. And because they're a mirrored image, they're going to be equal. So I can set up an equation to show that relationship that 4x plus 8 is equal to 6x minus 4. And then I can solve that equation for x. So I'm going to start by combining like terms and get the x's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides of the equation. And that's going to leave me with 8 is equal to 2x minus 4. Then I'm going to get that 4 on the other side. The opposite of minus 4 is plus 4. So I'm going to add that over. And I'm going to get 12 is equal to 2x. Final step to get rid of that 2, which is multiplying x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2 to get 6 is equal to x. Now, this problem doesn't give 6 as a possible answer, but I do want to point out that a lot of times they want you to like get distracted. I want to point out that sometimes they want you to get distracted partway through the problem and like, oh, I got my answer. Um, so be careful of that. We are looking for angle CBF, so we're not done yet. So CBF was given by 4x plus 8, so I'm going to plug in 6 to that. So 4 times 6 plus 8 is going to give me the measure of CBF. So that's 24 plus 8 which is 32 degrees, which we see is this top option there. So the next question asks, which of the following theorems determines that triangles XYZ and ABC are similar? So if you don't remember, similar figures have the same shape and have proportional dimensions. Um, so as we look at like sides that probably correspond to each other, we're looking at like two and four, and notice the scale factor there is two, and then four and eight, that scale factor is two, and same with three to six. So because we only know side measures, we can kind of eliminate anything that deals with angles because we know no angle measures, right? We're only giving side measures. So even just by doing that, it really only leaves one option, but also we can see that each of the sides are proportional. And that's a good thing to check in case one of the answers are like, they aren't similar. So the correct answer is the side-side-side theorem. This problem says triangle HYV and triangle AYB are similar by the angle-angle similarity theorem. What is the value of x? So you may remember that when figures are similar, their sides are going to be proportional. Um, so we can set up a proportion to help us find the value of x. So when I say proportional, I mean that the scale factor between, say, uh, side AY and this whole length it x is going to be the same scale factor used between yb, which is 16, and this whole dimension, um, which we're going to have to add 16 and 22 together to get 38. Um, that's going to be the same scale factor. So you can either figure out what the scale factor is between 16 and 38 um, and apply that to find here, or if it's not as easy to spot, which is going to be the case for this one, we could set up a proportion. So I'm going to be very systematic, and I'm going to say, okay, 17 is to 16, which is, you know, essentially the left to the bottom, is equal to, okay, left corresponds with x, so that's going to go in the numerator, to 38. 
And then now we have a proportion that we can solve. Um, we're gonna use cross multiplication. So I'm gonna do 16 times x to get 16x. And then I'm gonna do the cross product the other way, 17 times 38. Definitely use that calculator and we get 646. Now, to get x by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by 16. Again, use that calculator and we get that x is equal to 40.375, which is the answer right there. So this next question says, what is the circumference of the circle and use pi as 3.14? So if you recall, to find circumference, we can use the formula C for circumference equals pi times the diameter, but the diameter is the distance all the way across the circle, which we could pretty quickly figure out from this picture. Or we can use the formula pi times two radii, since there are two radii for any given diameter, which you may be used to seeing written as circumference equals two pi r. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this version just because we are given the radius right here. So we're gonna plug in eight for the radius, and then we're gonna be plugging in 3.14 for pi. So that's gonna look like two times 3.14 times eight, which it's actually easier for my brain to just quickly do two times eight to get 16, but then I'm definitely gonna wanna use that calculator and do 16 times 3.14, which is going to get you 50.24, which is this answer right here. I hope you found this helpful and are feeling a little bit more confident. If it was, I highly recommend heading over to study.com for even more study resources, including other videos similar to this, as well as our Praxis test prep course. As a member, you'll gain access to hundreds of practice problems, in-depth lessons on challenging topics, and some great test-taking strategies to help you ace your exam. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more helpful content. We'd love to hear about your experience and what else we can do to help you get ready for your test. So leave a comment below with your suggestions, questions, and even come back and let us know how you did. Study well and good luck on your test.